Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Spare Change. As you can see, we have been out for a cool minute, but now we are back in full effect. So today's topic, of course, we are in episode 18, 18, 18, 18. So we are going to talk about bucket lists. What is a bucket list? Why are bucket lists important? What is your bucket list? What are your dreams? What do you want to achieve? Like, you know, it's just an open dialogue, you know, to have. I know for a lot of people, we do a lot of things in our daily life. And sometimes we forget to take a pause and really figure out what we want to do, what we want to do in our life. In previous episodes, we talked about treat yourself, right? So mm -hmm. part of having a bucket list is a part of you being able to treat yourself with a lifetime experience, a lifetime goal. So let's talk about it. Yes. Um, I think one thing I'm going to get checked off my bucket list. Finally, this weekend, I'm going to Portland, Oregon. It's going to be a short trip, but it's been on my bucket list probably since, I don't know, when did hipsters become popular? That's a joke. <laughs> um, no, I, it's been there for a while. I want to say maybe in 2009, I wanted to go and it's like right there. So of course, I choose the pandemic to fly out, you know, um, <laughs> especially when it's surging now, like, okay, might as well go to Costa Rica then. That's also on my bucket list. But yeah, tra travel is something I, like, Nelsie, like, I know you've done. And like, I, I always think about that. Like, I admire, like, places you've gone, like, uh, Haru. I know she's gone to international Um but that's something I, I haven't ventured into. And when I finally got the like, okay, I'm going to do it was when I turned uh, 35 in 2020. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to do it. And then boom, March the pandemic. Because I turned 35 in February of 2020. And then the pandemic hit. And I was like, oh. I'm excited yeah. for you. I didn't even yeah, know you so were going to Portland. But you... I'm just excited for you to make that bucket list because that you've been thinking about traveling for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, excited. So Damn, that's it'll tight. Be it'll be no. fun. Nelson, were you in Oregon? Yeah, I went to school, uh, played football in Oregon, and then. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't remember then, if it was um, Oregon or Utah. No, no, it was Oregon. Uh, Eastern Oregon University is where I went to uh, play ball. Uh, but it, it was for maybe like four to five hours away from Portland. So if you like wanted to go like to a big city, Portland would be it or Boise, Idaho. So it's in between those two um, cities. Oh, nice. Yeah, but it's, man, it's exciting. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be hot. The weather's going to be good. The food's always great. And you have to go to a, there's a special place where you go uh, through this like restaurant. And then it's like, a, like one of the oldest strip clubs in the world. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a historic little uh, uh, thing there. So it's something, it's like a, a thing to do. And they Close serve. To the strip club, girl. Yeah, yeah you got it, to. Yeah, somebody told me about this strip club that was out there mm -hmm. that's like, but I don't know if it's the same one. That's like, um, it's karaoke strip club. Uh, crack, but they it's have, important. Uh, they have karaoke, they, they do like have a karaoke night. So maybe well, that's karaoke it, yeah. and stripping at the same <laughs> time. Yeah, so uh, while the strippers on the pole, you're to the side. You're and like you're, uh, you're uh, singing. Uh, uh, staying alive. <laughs> so I could be singing and karaoke and they're gonna be stripping to me singing. And the booties be shaking. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm what I heard. To picture it. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah. a man there too, because you know I gotta look at it. listen. I got, they got a male one. No, too. I think it I think I think it's only the females, but you're it's, correct. It's only the yeah. females. Well, I mean, you can always watch so, so, tricks from home. So the person who was telling me <laughs> that when he went, he said that someone got up there and was, so while the stripper was stripping, he was singing, the, the guy was singing, but he was, um, he was like a handicap. So, you know, so he was on a wheelchair and then had a service dog. And so the oh, service damn. dog was up there on the stage while he was singing in a, in a wheelchair while the stripper was. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's a true That's story. Not even gonna laugh. Oh my goodness! Not even gonna laugh. I'm excited for you though. But I was a lot of that. 
it was a lot of stimulation and people wanted to give the dog dollars you know <laughs> I believe, I'm I the believe one it's, giving the dog the dollars I believe it's called Mary's Club I did a quick search to but I don't remember what it's called so I think it's called Mary's Club so if you're I will go just to see that that I've never been to a strip club maybe maybe that'll also be on my you've never been to a strip strip club no I haven't and Uh, honestly I mean I I can't I you know it's like probably the last thing on my bucket list but I don't care yeah I'm gonna have a party and I'm gonna make you come oh my god (laughs) okay okay that's a whole that's what she that's a whole yeah yeah yeah. okay okay (laughs) today we're today we're talking about bucket bucket lists only left the building okay (laughs) Like, this, is, uh, this took a wrong turn uh, it, so yeah. in the beginning nelson was asking like what is a bucket list what do you what right. is your guys's idea or definition of a bucket list yolo see i, I feel like that too like once YOLO. in a lifetime once in like, a lifetime experience yeah like for me it's not something i necessarily may like but i need to experience because like it's something that I need to like I have like a visceral feeling like I need to experience this I mean I, like I like I had gooey I I ate gooey which is a guinea pig I necessarily did not want to eat it but I knew that I needed to try just to see what it tasted like what the hell I'm sorry side note one more time what have you not ate you know like what have you not ate like yeah I've had a lot I, I'm not. I'm an adventurous eater. Yes. You ain't lying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. But I just wanna. I wanna try. Like with food. Uh, but there's a couple bucket list things. There's some things that I, that I won't eat. But. What will you, you know, not eat? Um. I don't. I don't think I'll ever eat the fermented shark that Icelandic folks do. Like I respect the culture and everything. And if they, if I was offered it, I would eat it. It's not something, but I, but you know, like uh, Bourdain once said that it was the worst thing he ever put in his mouth. And he's had a lot, he's had way more things than, than I've eaten, you know what I mean? So oh I'm just like, God. damn. Poor animals. I, well, girl, it, it, they'd be eating in the wild if, you know I what mean, mean? It's a hard life. It's a hard life for an animal. To capitate the balls <laughs> and just eat them. Like, dude, what did the balls do to you? <laughs> hey, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You you put you it tastes like chicken. It tastes like a, a that's disgusting. So that's what it tastes like. Okay, it, it, I'm, done with, I'm done with you for the rest of the time. <laughs> I feel like every conversation is gonna take a turn. I know. <laughs> right? Right? I'm, I'm like I'm so I'm like, we went from never to seeing strippers to bull balls. And what do you need a possum? A guinea pig. How a do guinea you pig. eat a guinea pig? That poor animal. They're, so well, essentially you wanna eat pets? Right? No, well, well, let's well, let's let's back the train up. In, in, <laughs> your dogs. Let's I, back the judgment yeah. train up. Yeah, in, in Peru, it's a it's a delicacy that they Dang. eat. So that's where I ate it. So I don't just have like a guinea pig here. I buy one from the <laughs> store and, and you know take a bite out of it. I was in I, I was know. in the I was in Peru I'm for my. Smart. <laughs> I had to put them in the garage. You know, I was in the in the garage. <laughs> 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 I'm like, there's a shell. I, I knew it was in, a uh, turtle inside Peru the shell. And, so I, I tried it. Mm. I think Japanese people eat a lot of interesting meats too. They mm-hmm. eat like horse. Some You're not allowed to eat horse here in the United States. Turtle, a horse? Lamb. And lamb's kind of normal, I guess. I've never had horse, but apparently it tastes pretty good. They, they eat raw horse. It's like, yeah. wait, wait, wait. It's, wait. it's raw sashimi horse. But wait. you know in Japan they eat raw chicken too. Yeah. Wait, how you how, like you skin the horse and you just eat it? Oh no, I don't want to <laughs> hear. <laughs> Chris, was, Chris was like, oh damn. Yeah, so you eat like you know how like fish sashimi is like raw fish? Right. It's, it's skinned and it's I've never eaten it before, so I don't know. But it's a horse. I've had raw, I have, you know, I've had beef tartare and beef tartare is. What's beef tartare? It's a raw, it's a prepare, it's a raw beef prepared in a certain way and you eat it raw. So the French eat it that way. 
um, Japanese folks, uh, upper, Euro upper European will eat it that way. It was just like, it's an old way of eating things so that you wouldn't get sick or, but it, but it's got elevated now, right? It's like a dish that got elevated in, in France, in France is what, the one I'm talking about, beef tartare or tuna tartare. Any tartare is basically raw. Okay. So <laughs> let me go ahead with my bucket list. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You're like, damn, I just blew my mind. <laughs> let me side note on my bucket list before I say what my bucket list is. Okay? okay. Respect to all cultures. I love all cultures. But if oh, you on, ever we'll see get... me world, if you ever see me world, do not give me eye contact and offer me anything because I do not want to be disrespectful to your culture because I'm going to close my eyes and keep walking because I'm not trying anything, okay? I don't even eat all American food and I'm American, okay? Listen, no. <laughs> but I am picky. I don't, eat, I, it's, yeah, it's, I don't even eat half of my own uh, culture. No, 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 let me tell you what this girl said. Before she starts <laughs> on her bucket list, she's going to send me a photo last week and saying, this is how you eat a tamale. Why? Is the tamale on a plate with ketchup all over it? Oh hell no! I I'm, I was like, you're, you're a done. blasphemer. You're, you're blasphemer. No, you're done. <laughs> you're, not, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to go to no Mexican restaurants no more with your ketchup <laughs> bottle. You better leave it in and the I car. And I do. I love Mexican food, and I always ask for ketchup. She do. Do you do you eat your corn with ketchup? No. She looks at you like you were crazy. Well, because you know, like because a tamale, all tamale is, it's just a ground up corn. So I just wondered. Like, no, I don't eat it on there. The but if it got on there, it wouldn't bother me. It wouldn't bother you. No, because yeah, I don't know. I like. Don't give her any ideas. She's about to put ketchup on, on, on the cob. I know. That's what I was I, thinking. I will try it. I it love ketchup. Sound bad. Yes. So yeah. just to say, even with my own culture, there's a lot of food. Like people look at me crazy because I don't eat my own cultural food. So okay. let them take offense. Well, okay. So to your bucket list, my bucket what's list. on it. What's on your bucket okay, list? Y'all don't laugh at me, okay? So my first okay. bucket list is to. I think I've robbed myself of enjoying just life because I am so terrified of planes. So what is on my first bucket list in order for me to complete anything on my bucket list is to get on a plane. So I have a schedule where I will be getting on a plane to go to Orlando in March. And I hope that they don't land the plane and put me off. Um, and Wait, then my, why, why didn't you do a shorter flight before you? I was going to do Vegas. but you Yeah, know, that's like 45 minutes. With you. For practice. I know, because we kept saying that, and I'm like, yeah, you nobody, may wanna... nobody's telling me anything. You guys, you guys are not like saying let's plan a Vegas trip, you know. So, I ain't going I'm... with her. On... Listen, I'm not getting on the first plane with Monique to watch Give me fall a two, out. Two. She's gonna, she's gonna act up on the plane, and I'm gonna be like, I don't know this. I'm person. gonna sit next to you and hold your hand, and you I'm know, gonna you... say I'm with her. You You're go. just gonna have to like bear hug her. You, but you think you think you'll feel like some type of way you think you control you think you'll she's gonna fine. press out the <laughs> the, the, only, the only thing is you can't be me i was gonna say you can't be mean to the crew because those fools will be like security you know no i don't think i'll be mean to them but if i nicely say please leave me be just leave me be okay yeah yeah they'll be fine yeah, you're gonna be tell them why why is it turbulent i don't understand this <laughs> Girl, please drive, like, drive, the fly the plane <laughs> smoothly. I think it's that I don't have any, it, I don't have any control. The fact that mm -hmm. I don't have any control mm -hmm. and my life is literally in someone else's hands and I can't control any of that. And then I'm in okay. this sky, like, okay, I know we keep getting off topic with these, but let me just say this. Okay, I am religious, right? And so I think that God is just an amazing God, that people, there's no way you're gonna walk out there in the ocean and think you're just gonna walk on water. But it's so interesting that you have this gigantic Titanic ship that can just float on water. Mm. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like this is tons and tons and it just ships on top of water. 
but let you walk on water. You're not walking on shit. You're falling straight down, you know? So it's just, and so it's like to have this big craft, like this airplane just float in the sky, even though it has a motor still, this is tons. And I don't know. I think sometimes my mind goes a little bit further when I Mm. think about stuff and I'm just like, Oh, I, I don't know. So all of those things create fear for me, but we talked about it on the podcast and how we're going to move past our fears and things. So I'm going to get on this plane and I'm going to have a bottle of Benadryl in my system. And so my goal is to, I really want to visit Thailand. That is like one of the biggest places I want to visit. I want to go to the Maldives. I want to go like, I want to go to uh, Hawaii. I want to, I just want to travel the world and I want to be able to see things outside of my own environment. One of my, another on my bucket list is my son. I want to be able to expose him to things outside of his environment and let him know that there is a beautiful place outside of where you live. And I want him Mm -hmm. to be able to have that life experience. So not only for myself, but I also want to travel the world and see things and just for me and my child. That is like one of my biggest, biggest, and my mom. My dad doesn't really care for flying and doing all that stuff, but my mom wants to see the world. And if that means that I can just take her to at least one of her things on her bucket list, that is a bucket list for me. And it's an yeah. achievement for me. So. My, that's awesome. I know it reminds me of when, uh, because my mom had never been to Europe. And so mm-hmm. she, we went, like when I was doing my, uh, my pictures for for my engagement with Carla, you know, I invited my mom to come and then she ended up taking a couple of days and going to Rome because she'd never been to Rome because, you know, we're, we're Catholic and that was really important to her. That's she, so. yeah, she, she, that's one of the trips that she'll forever remember, she says. And it was a good time. We all stayed in the same place. So we had a, like a big apartment it was just really like uh, that was a bucket list because Carla wanted uh, our engagement pictures in Paris. Mm-hmm. And at the time, this guy was like a really dope uh, photographer that wasn't well known. And now all he does is like movie star people. Now it's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, because we wanted to do another. Uh, well, I didn't, but she wanted to see how much it would be like just for another photo. She could just check it out. But he's like a year in advance to even mm-hmm. get with them. I know it's pretty crazy. You know, you mentioned that another one of my bucket lists is I would love to go back to my, you know, roots and things like that. I really would love to visit Africa and the different places of Africa and be able to kind of see a lot of the monuments and the things like that. You know, um, I know we have a colleague who visit Africa and I was looking at his Facebook and some of the stuff that like the places that he visited, it for me, it was emotional just to see it through just his social media and his experience and just what he shared. It was just like, I would love to experience that, you know, and to Mm -hmm. just be there to say, okay, this is where it started. This is where it came from, you know? So that's another one of my big bucket lists. Um, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you guys have any like... um, Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, do, do you have any like small bucket list things that you guys have crossed off or like maybe, or they don't have to be small, but things you guys have done and like crossed it off, did it kind of thing. Cause like, I have an example. Uh, so I forgot about a bucket list I wrote when I was like maybe 16. It was small and I found it um, in 2018. And it was hilarious because I found it the night after something on that bucket list happened. And I just thought it was so, yeah, I thought it was like serendipitous, like, oh my gosh, like this happened. So um, in 20, I think it was like October of 2018, um, one of my friends on Instagram was selling a ticket to a concert. And I was like, oh, I'm going, I had seen all these bands before. I just never seen them together. It was like AFI, Rise Against. Um, I think those are just, I don't know who opened for them. Oh, Thrice. Might have been thrice. I'm not sure. But I went to the show and I ended up forcefully having to crowd surf out of the pit because I'm so like, so I'm 
happened and it was too much. Like I couldn't breathe and I was right in the middle, like right dead center. It was, it got crazy. And Damn. the, the friends right that it. I was with, I, yeah, the friends that I was with were like, yeah, you, you look like you're going to pass out. And I was like panicky because it was closing in and I couldn't get air. Mm. And so two of the guys were like, you got to go, like, you got to get out. And so I was like, what do you mean? I got to get out. You have to, you have to crowd surf. And I was like, oh my God, no way. No, you guys can't do this. Like, I can't. They're like, get up, get up. And they just like lifted, launched me up. And there I go, crowd surfing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm doing <laughs> this. So it's happening. And then the bouncer or not the bouncer security or whatever caught me. And then I like, you know, go off. And then the next day, so I was like, call, call, immediately called my brother. Oh my God, guess what just happened? I crowd surfed in a Rise Against concert. And he's like, okay cool like awesome and i was way more excited <laughs> and then the next day i ended up finding that in one of my old journals and i'm like oh my gosh i had crowd surfing on here and it took you know just 17 years later for me to finally <laughs> do it and i just think that's funny how when you write things down because i'm always like about manifesting and you write your stuff down and it can happen and it happened and i was like it's wow true. this is crazy so i don't know if you guys have any that's stories like that I, I actually have one. I wanted to see uh, Blink-182 at the Wiltern for the longest. I had seen them in festivals, but I love the Wiltern on uh, their, it's, yeah, it's uh, old school there. venue. Yeah. So I wanted to be there and I wanted to be in the pit for Blink-182. And so the last, sh so I don't know how Carla managed to get tickets, but she got tickets for me and she got tickets in the, in the pit area. And I got to see the original Blink-182 play for the last time. Uh, oh, ever. yeah, before yeah. they broke up, huh? Before they broke up, yeah. And so that, to me, was... I never, I didn't write it down or anything, but I, I knew, like, it was a special moment because, like, everybody in the pit knew, like, this would be the last time. And so everybody went out with the bang. There wasn't really, like, a big mosh pit. It was more, like, just everybody bouncing and just knowing it was the last time. And it just so the felt energy really was lit, huh? Yeah, it was so lit. And everybody was friendly, like, from the left to the right. Everybody just was there to just pay homage and just really see. And they had the – they played – you know how it is. Those guys are just amazing. To they, me, they're great, yeah. They were, they were just great together. Like, separately, they have their other stuff. But in that moment, I, I was like, dang, I feel really complete right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's tight. For me, I think after college, I wanted to travel. I used to travel a lot more when I was a little bit younger, um, but I've always wanted to go to Africa. So I ended up going to Ghana in West Africa. So I went there for three months teaching English to kids at an orphanage at this remote little village. I think it was like Northern Ghana, but it was a life-changing experience. That's kind of what got me into social work or wanting wanting me to pursue social work. Um, yeah. So it was this little village. They had no running water, no electricity. Um, literally, like in front of the place that I was staying, I got I got to stay in my own room, but there was like this like outhouse where you use a bathroom, and then there was this little shower that was like an outside shower made on dirt and so I felt like my feet were never clean so I had to take like a bucket shower so you take a big bucket of water and then you take a little bucket of water and then you like shower so I never felt clean um but it was mm. like it was the most amazing experience that I had um yeah I got to see live elephants like in the in their own habitat not at the zoo when they're sad <laughs> um but one of my other bucket lists is to be able to see wild giraffes because in Ghana they don't have giraffes um so I would like to see giraffes and then in not Ghana in the zoo yeah not the LA zoo where they're, where they're really sad <laughs> hey hey <laughs> no, what, that makes me think what Haruli says and it makes me beat myself up so much sometimes that I allow my fears to get the best of me because again because I've I've never rode planes and I'm scared of them I had the opportunity to go and stay in Ghana when I was in the MSW program. Mm. And I was one of the chosen ones to go. 
and I declined it all because I was scared and it was like that was a lifetime experience and you know so to hear you say that and it's like oh my god like I could have experienced that and I allowed my fear to take that experience away from me you know so it kind of sucks but it's just it just sounds like such an awesome experience. I think one of my fondest memories from Ghana was um, at the orphanage. They had um, a generator, so they had some kind of electricity, and it was a time where um, the World Cup was going on, and Ghana's mm. pretty strong in soccer. You know, everyone plays soccer there. And so literally, the because there's no, there's no electricity in the town, like the whole town came to the orphanage to watch the World Cup in this like little tiny TV screen that they had. And it was Aww. such like a beautiful like community. Just you know, I cried. Remember, yeah. I, I cried watching it because I remember like everyone just came together and they were cheering for their country and they were so upset because I think no, they won the United States at this round that I was watching, and so they were like clowning on me and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> that's on my bucket list to go so either go watch the World Cup or when the World Cup comes here. Um, to agree. see it here, to see a game. Yeah. Honestly, too. I would love to either see Mexico play or Costa Rica play. I well, mean, United States, yeah, if I, but mostly Costa Rica or Mexico. <laughs> also, my, I don't know why my dad swears he was Latino in his past life. <laughs> <laughs> he like resonates with the Latin people, um, but he wants to go to Peru before he dies. And, you know, my parents are getting older and I want to be able to take them to Peru. I've never been to Peru. Um, so I want to go in the next few years and go to Machu Picchu. That's one of the places my dad wants to go. So. Well, it is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. You could take John Carlo. There yeah. you go. <laughs> now, yeah. see, you've been everywhere. I have. I've been not, I just never been to Asia, the continent of Asia, but. Well, Constantinople, does that count as it's kind of Europe, Asia, but I was there. But it, like the coolest place I've ever been is probably my, my own, like, bit, you know, when you go to a country that your family is from, because I started, so I used to get in trouble when I was younger. So my mom sent me to Mexico with my cousin. So that's how my <laughs> like traveling started. And so... I knew I was sitting in a in a chair and I got fed this food that it was airplane food and I was just like man this is you feel like it's it's changed now but like it was just like for me it was unattainable I thought it was like for business people or for and me this little kid going on this plane ride I remember looking outside my window for the first time thinking like dang like I'm gonna be not gonna be able to see my parents or my my mother, and so um, I went with my mother's family, and it was it was a lot of just just learning about my my Mexican culture because you know I was going to Mexico, and just how vastly it impacted my life for the rest of my life, because you know like you look at the people in a small town and they kind of work together like one will do the bread one will do the cheese one will raise the chickens or the goats or whatever it is and they all kind of shared back in the day i don't know how it is now it's probably more commercialized now but like when i wanted to use the phone i had to go to a lady's house like a block and a half down just to use the phone to call the united states and so mm -hmm. it's just a it was it's just a different situation back then and i just think like for me, like one of the bucket lists that I want to do is go back there because I haven't been back there since I was a kid. And so just maybe visiting family or visiting graves of folks that are dead now and just kind of, you know, just paying homage because I've been I've been blessed to be able to travel. And so one of that was one of my all time bucket lists. I wanted to be like a pilot. And but then I was like, nah, I just want to travel. You know, I want to be a jet set. So my my new bucket list is always to be a jet setter. Like, you know, pick up and go whenever you want. That's my goal. I, I think that's awesome that you're saying that because I know that there's people in my life who I love dearly who can't travel, you know, because mm -hmm. of immigration status or mm -hmm. um, 
and then or even money right or even money yeah. or being sick like currently my grandmother with cancer she can't really leave right now because of the treatment and having to get the refill on the pill so when it's when it's a safe time she will hopefully get to go visit Costa Rica it's like I think about those things too like man I have the privilege right now of being able to go like I have the passport I have the clearance or if I can save a little bit of money because I have the ability to do so why am I not so many other people are in situations where they can't so I think that's another motivating factor for me um sometimes I think it also prevents me sometimes because not out of guilt but there are certain things I've wanted to see but it's like I want to see it with this person or I want to see it with that family member like mm -hmm. like people have asked me why haven't you gone to Costa Rica and before it was it was laziness on not getting my passport together just and now it's like I want to see it with my grandma you know and my mom like I don't want to go without her I might have to but I don't like, I really want to go and have her tell me, hey, this is where this happened. Or, hey, like, this is where this happened. And mm -hmm. I don't know. So I feel like this is where I grew up. Or yeah. So there, there's something about that, too. And sometimes people will come come down on me like they'll say stuff. And I'm like, you also don't get it. Like, there's like, I really want to go do this. And it's like, but I want to experience it with this person, too. Like, mm -hmm. I get it. Like, you've got to do for yourself. Right. So, like, no matter what, I've told myself next year, I have to go to Hawaii, assuming things aren't super crazy. I want to go. And I'm okay if it doesn't end up being with, you know, whoever. But certain places I won't go until I know either I can go with that person or, you know, you know, with Costa Rica, I want to take my mom and my grandma. I want to go together with them. That's yeah. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. I also I tell people to, like, um, when you get an opportunity, if you go to college to study abroad, because when you study yeah. abroad, you, you pay the same price as your tuition and then you get to live in a different country for a semester. Right. Or a year. And yes, it's great to vacation and see different places, but to actually live in a different country for, you know, a year or six months, however long is like you, you don't get to know the real culture until you live, live there and kind of, you know, move with the people there. And so yeah, I feel like once you're, even if you get to Europe, like once you're in Europe, it's very easy to travel to mm. so many different countries in Europe because they're so close together. Mm. And so, yeah, if you have an opportunity to study abroad, I would say study abroad. Why not? You know? Yeah. yeah. I like wish I would things, study abroad. I didn't. Yeah, me neither. I feel like other things too, like have been like, like another one of mine is like, I always, always say I'm going to write a book. I want to write a book. I don't want to write a self-help book. I don't want a therapy book. Like I want to write like a, like a novel or um, some kind of like magical mystery kind of something like, obviously I love Harry Potter. I don't want to copy <laughs> Harry Potter, but if I did, that's, that's what <laughs> you guys would. So I, I think about like those kind of bucket lists too. Um, even like I was even talking to a friend about how, there are things in your city that you may not even know, like could potentially have been on your bucket list or you, or maybe you don't even know that they should be. And then you find out like, this was mm. here the whole time. What? And I never visited this or I never went there to eat or I never saw the scenic route or did this hike here. Like what? I, I think that's an interesting one too. Like I've never yeah, hiked yeah, the Hollywood that. sign, but I hear that that one's like on people's bucket list and I always crack up because I'm like, I live say, right here and yeah. I never go. There's yeah, so this one beautiful place, and I can't remember that, what it's called, and it's in um, Lake Tahoe that I want to visit. I don't know the name, but it's like clear, clear, like glassy, clear water, and has it's like, it's Lake Tahoe. Yeah. It, but like, is there a is it a certain name it, like in Lake Tahoe? It, it's a whole lake, so it's a, just a whole. So it's that's how the lake is. Okay, yeah. I. I have like, um, like, I, okay, so I like this page, right? And I mm -hmm. follow it and it's a bucket list. And it's so amazing that you see that, like, I, I, I love water. Anything with beautiful water, count me in, I'm there. And so I always admire the things that I see on there. And it makes me want to create an even bigger, like, bucket list when I see all these different places. And it's so crazy that sometimes I'll click on it. 
and it's right here up under our noses. Like it is like within California or right a skip and a jump in Nevada or Arizona. And it's like beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful mm-hmm. places. And I'm like, this is like, I can, we can drive here. You know what I'm saying? So being able to kind of explore the things within our own state, like places that you never even knew really even existed or like on the bucket list. And so I really like get a lot of my ideas and places that I want to travel from that site on Facebook. Like it's pretty cool. cool. One of my friends during COVID, um, she stopped working because of COVID. And so her and her partner decided to like backpack, not backpack, like what is it called? When you take like a camping car and- RV. Yeah, she like took an RV and she started from New Jersey and then she like went to all these different states. And so she's like camping at different places and seeing the nature and that was really cool. That's so every time great. I talk to her, I'm like, where are you now? She's like, well, I'm in North Dakota or, you know, she's like all over the place. Ooh. Is- That's where my dad lives. North Dakota? Dad lives in North Dakota? Yes. Damn. Yes. Tell her to say hi. He's the only guy probably wearing a Raider hat and who's dark with the, <laughs> the Mexican bird or whatever what is it the mexican eagle from the yeah. flag tattooed mexican on it <laughs> yeah that's the tell her to say hi to him <laughs> eagles are a very big thing in mexican culture the 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 thing is is that like the eagle like where the eagle and the snake meet is where oh, tenochtitlan yeah, yeah where tenochtitlan was built which is mexico city now so it's like a like it's a really I don't know I don't know all of it but like that's a pretty standard tattoo for Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> the eagle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I almost got an eagle one time I didn't end up getting it. <laughs> oh my goodness. How funny. So my bucket list I have a real bucket list that thing that I just need to do is like I want to be fully sleeved. So oh, tattoo? Yeah, uh huh. Tattoo sleeve. Mm. So, I'm 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 working on it, but you know it's expensive. So, I love I I love like uh, I love the gang culture. I love uh, that old school '90s cholo cultures because I grew up in that culture. So I had an affinity for the tattoos always. So since I was like maybe nine years old, I asked my mom for a tattoo. And she said, no, she said, no, you can get one when you graduate high school. And then I didn't have the, I clearly found out that the money was way more than I could afford in, at 18. So I had to wait until I had, you know, a few dollars in my bank account to get a tattoo. And so now, you know, I try to save money to, to fill out my sleeves now as a older person. <laughs> it's such a weird thing. That I, get, that I get tattooed like I think in my brain like oh man like because I'm 30 set I'm 37 so but I think by the time I'll be done I'll have to be like 40 or 41 because you know they take a long time I'll be yeah. back on your tattoo because I'm trying to get me a sleep too Let's I see. just went and got pricing um the other day but yeah I'm with the ta- I, mm, I, know. I just love it I love it with the way it looks on people Mm-hmm. Like and then it's like an expression of their outward expression of themselves, you know. Yes. I just love. Okay, I just love tattoo culture. No tattoo. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love <them>. nothing. <laughs> well, I I also want to go to a Raider game, the Las Vegas Raiders in their new stadium. Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. The Death think, Star. The Death Star. Yeah. Dude, I just yeah. wish they would change their logo to Darth Vader and the Death Star. Like, that'd be tight. They might as well. <laughs> it looks so cool, though. That stadium looks really cool. Looks like a spaceship. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Damn. I'm trying to think, you know like, what? what? I just thought about it. I have another bucket list, too. Because mm, you said small ones, right? Mm. You can. I'm whatever you want. Or big or whatever. I want to purchase a second home yeah. a little further out. And I want to get to a place where I find 
time and balance in my own life where I can really, really launch my uh, uh, essential line, a candle essential line. Oh, yeah. And I want it to be, I don't want it to just be like, you know, just like small, like, you know, small business. Like I want to open up at some point, like a franchise. Like, a, okay. you know, like I want to open up a, a, a very large store and have more than one of That'd essential cool. line candles. And oh. I mean, other stuff like candles and since, you know, just just things. And I want to create some type of like, but when I, I don't want to share all my ideas because, you know, this is the world. Exactly. <laughs> but, but yeah. Don't, like, share, your, don't share your dreams. <laughs> share your buckets. Right. That part. Yeah, but yeah. I just want to create something different and I want, and that is a, definitely a part of my bucket list. Like I want to, like, of course, you know, my position and what I do, but in the ending part, like eventually, like, of course, this is my passion, you know, as far as my career and what I do now as a therapist, but I want to end it on a note in doing something that I genuinely genuinely have a passion for yeah. that I could sit back and like just watch it grow mm. so I, I have that I have a similar like I don't want to be a therapist forever I think yeah. um I think my like I think my second act is probably going to come fairly soon and like Mo I have dreams and I I, I always believe you don't share your dreams because <laughs> then they go away Mm -hmm. but um but one of the biggest things for me is like understanding when it's time for my second act I mean mm -hmm. I think that's what I I always think about that because I, I want to do so many things like you know one of my heroes is Joe Rogan and he does like three four or five things in his life and I want to get there I want to be able to do like maybe one day of therapy maybe one day of this one day of, mm -hmm. of that and not necessarily you know like I'm doing a podcast because Joe Rogan is doing one, mm -hmm. but I really just want to, because when, when I first saw him to now, like he's just a vastly different person than he was when he was in his thirties, when I started watching him, you know, cause most of his podcasts were like shit jokes and smoking weed. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, just being this person to like, you know, giving voice to the voiceless basically, you know what I mean? I think that's really dope to me. And so it's something that I think about and I, yeah, but what I'm excited about is my second act. Like when I'm done with therapy, like, you know, and being, and doing something else. Cause I've been doing, you know, we've all been doing therapy at legal. Well, you guys started in 28, 2007, right? School. 07. Yeah. 2007. I started. Yeah. Cause I started 20, 2008. So Damn, you know, am I the baby? You the baby. You are. You the baby. You mm -hmm. are, girl. You always been the baby. Mm -hmm. Whatever. <laughs> Not in age. Crystal's the baby in age. I know. What are you? Aren't you? Wait, no. You are the baby in age, Mo. No, I'm not. Right? Are you Crystal's old, younger? I'm thirty six. And I'm thirty seven. I'm thirty seven. Oh, I thought you were thirty six. Am I thirty seven? <laughs> so you're 1984. You're 1984. Yeah, I am. 37. Oh, okay. Yeah, you were thirty seven. Yeah. Maybe second oh, guess yeah. myself. It's been the pandemic, y'all. Yeah. The whole pandemic. I swear, y'all. People be asking me how old I am, and I had to calculate that shit. I'm like, well, you look, you, you look twenty one, girl. <laughs> you look twenty one. So watch out. Watch out. I used to always That's think right. when adults couldn't remember how old they were, like, what's wrong with them? How can't they remember how old they are? But I always have to calculate how old I am because I always forget. Yep. I, 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 I always thought the same thing, Haru, and now I'm one of those freaking, <laughs> oh, no, oh, carry the know. one, carry please, the two. Please, yeah. <laughs> please yeah. see how many years I've been alive. I know, right? God. And I think 1984, take away... So that's why we, hey, that's why we vibing all the time, Mo. Because you're feeling that 84 vibe. Uh, uh. Oh, exactly. <laughs> God. So what, so what's somebody's, uh, does anybody want to talk about a goal they have for this year? Yes. Yeah, to weigh 125 pounds before I, <laughs> before December. 
What if we, mine too? Flying. Mine too, Chris. You, you want to be 120? Could you imagine? I'd be an arm. <laughs> right, but I don't want to be 125. I want to be like in a 180, 170, 180. Because you guys got to remember, I'm 411. Uh, yeah. So anything supposedly over 115 or 114 is like, a, you're already overweight. And I'm really? like, well, I'm way over that. But yeah, like, Okay, okay, okay. If I get 230, I'm good. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, as long as you have good blood pressure and you have, you know, your your waist size is in above a 35 inches, you're, you know, that's stand like that's the standard. You know what I mean? So that's where I want to be. I don't care how much I weigh. I want I want my waist to be around 36 to 34. That's the goal. I'm gonna try. I don't know if I can ever get there. You can, but I, 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 well, I, well, I've been to 38 and I was pretty, like, I was it's at 36. because Nelson loves the food. He knows yeah. it too. He's yeah. like me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love, Marie too. I Marie love the food, so cool food and I love, but the thing is, like, I was down to, like, near 230 and I, my, my waist was 34 inches. Tell them no, Nelson. See, I just want to lose, I want to lose some pounds, but I want to stay thick. I don't want to be skinny or like small. So if you put me in like a 180 category or something, mm -hmm. just like, you know, take some of my, some of my fluffy off or whatever, <laughs> trim it. You know how you trim the meat, whatever. Just trim what, 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 are, what are you, a damn brisket? I feel like brisket. <laughs> you're like, you're like, let just me trim, trim a little. Trim it a little bit here, trim it a little bit here. You see, you notice how it went like this? Just trim it like that and then leave it, bow, leave it, I'm just fine. Damn. Like I, wanna, I like being thick. Like I don't want to be small. I just need to tone certain areas so that it looks cuter. cuter. That's always on the bucket list. Yeah. That's well, always a goal. My health. Like a healthy weight. Yeah. Yeah. Healthy, so. I my goal this year is to just love. You know, love myself and just give myself a break. You know what I mean? I think sometimes I'm too hard on myself to the detriment of me. So that's been one of my goals this year is like the weight is going to come off. You know, I already lost uh, almost 40 pounds. I'm at 39 pounds right now. And so like it's going to come off, but I just got to be nicer to myself. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you're your own worst critic. You're like, it's not moving too fast or you're not doing this or you're not doing that or why'd you do this it's just noise you know what i mean and right. like i feel i feel like when i'm kinder to myself i'm kinder to other people you know what i mean because it's true that's what it is man for me anyway yeah, i just true. feel i try i'm that's what i'm trying you know what i mean and i'm trying to just get purpose you know like living my life with purpose and having a drive that's out of this world I know, like, since I lost, the, so from May to now, from, sorry, from March to now, I've lost 39 pounds. And, like, one of the biggest things is my energy level is starting to change finally, this, like, like, last week and this week. And I don't know if it has to do with doing extracurricular activities mm -hmm. or, like, I just feel good. Like, I jump out of bed feeling better. My blood pressure was, like, 127 over 80. Oh. Which that's is, good. yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's that, so it was, like, I'll tell you, it was like 150 over something back, like 150 over 90, like six months ago. So it was high in six months. So mm -hmm. like, I just think like it's doable. You know what I mean? Like just keep following those goals, man. If you just right. leave breadcrumbs and continue to do it, like things will happen for you. Even though you feel like, you know, sometimes you don't know where to start. Well, just the start yeah. just to start just, i mean that's, you... I, yeah sorry nelson no, go ahead, go ahead. Ahead. no, you're no like that's what i think overall like with the bucket list and the goals and everything you're talking about i mean i think it's really important to write it down and then like start mm -hmm. checking them off you know like if you have to start with the small ones then start there because that's just going to build your momentum to the to the bigger um things you want to cross off or do or you know so but do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, a, that's the key, right? It's just like, if you feel like you want to do something, do, do it. it. 
Like don't yeah. wait. Within don't reason. Wait within reason. Within reason. Don't wait for it to be perfect though. Cause sometimes people are like, oh I'll do don't wait for it to be perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Well, this was a really therapeutic podcast, but anyway, two one one. Two one one. It was therapeutic for us. <laughs> But 211, if you need help, 211.org, you can find a referral for therapy if you need it. And we'll be back uh, in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.